The acknowledged master of his generation in both fields was the Sikh Sir Bhupinder Singh the Magnificent the Seventh Maharaja of Patiala. His cricket and polo teams, Patiala Eleven and Patiala Tigers, were among the best of India. He adored polo and galloping across the polo fields of the world at the head of his Tigers of Patiala, he accumulated a roomful of silver trophies. To sustain those efforts his stables harbored 500 of the world's finest polo ponies. He was a great patron of sports. Maharaja Bhupinder Singh, with his 6-foot 4-inch frame, his 300 pounds, his sensual lips and arrogant eyes, his black mustache swept up into perfectly waxed needle points, his carefully rolled black beard, be seemed to have stepped into the 20th century off the ivory of some mogul miniature. His appetite was such that he could consume 20 pounds of food in the course of strenuous day or a couple of chickens as a tea-time snacks. From his earliest adolescence Bhupinder Singh demonstrated a remarkably refined aptitude for an equally worthy pastime sex. As he came to maturity his devotion to his harem eventually surpassed even his passions for polo and hunting. He personally supervised the steady accumulation of its inmates selecting new recruits with connoisseurs' appreciation of variety in appearance and accomplishment in action. By the time the institution reached its fullest fruition it contained 350 ladies. During the torrid Punjab summers the harem moved out of doors in the evening to Bupinder's pool. The prince stationed a score of bare-breasted girls like nymphs at intervals around its rim. Chunks of ice bobbing in the pool's water grave the hot air a delicious chill while the Maharaja floated idly about coming port from time to caress a beauty or sip a whiskey. The walls and ceilings o Bupinder's private quarters were covered with representations of the erotic temple sculptures for which India is justly famous, a catalogue of copulative possibilities to exhaust the most inventive mind and athletic body. A wide hammock slung in one corner of the room allowed Bupinder Singh, in a sense to suspend the laws of gravity while attempting to perform in the state some of the more complex maneuvers suggested by his ceiling. To satisfy his insatiable habits the imaginative Maharaja embarked on a program which would allow him to remodel the charms of his concubines as his own taste changed. Sir Bupinder opened his harem doors to a parade of perfumers, jewelers, hairdressers, beauticians and dressmakers. He even kept a team of French, British and Indian plastic surgeons on standby to alter the physiognomies of his favorites according to his fluctuating taste or the dictates of the London fashion magazines. Further to stimulate his princely ardors he converted one wing of the harem into a laboratory whose test tubes and vials produced an exotic blend of scents cosmetics, lotions and filters. All those piquant refinements ultimately only served to screen the fatal weakness in the Maharaja's oriental pleasure dome. What man, even a Sikh as handsomely endowed by nature as Sir Bhupinder was, could satisfy the 350 highly trained and motivated ladies lurking behind the harem's grills? Recourse to aphrodisiacs was inevitable. His Indian doctors worked up a number of savory concoctions based on gold, earls, spices, sliver, herbs and iron. For a while their most efficacious potion was based on a mixture of shredded carrots and crushed brains of a sparrow. When its benefits began to wane Sir Bupinder called in a group of French technicians whom he naturally assumed would enjoy special expertise in the matter. Alas, even the effects of their treatment based on radium proved ephemeral because they like their predecessors had no cure for the real illness from which the Maharaja suffered. It was not lack of virility that afflicted the jaded and sated prince. He was a malady that plagued not a few of his surfeited fellow rulers. According to some observers, Bupinder simply became bored and lost the will to live, the company of women no longer enough to keep him excited.